Hello, Dr. Brian Abelson from Kinetic Health. Today we're going to go over the superficial front line. What we're going to talk about are myofascial connections, connections between different structures from the bottom of the foot right to the top of the head, and how these structures, muscles, tendons, ligaments, are connected together with fascia or connective tissue. This is a really interesting subject. It shows us how one area of the body can create dysfunction in another area. How we can have one problem in the kinetic chain, which may be up in the neck, and yet this is causing a problem farther down the body, or something in the leg or the abdomen is creating problems either up or down from those points. What we're going to do first is we're going to take out some tape, and we're actually going to tape the lines. Hello, Dr. Evangelos Milonas at Kinetic Health. Now that Brian's taped the superficial front line, you can see that there's a left and a right, consisting of two lines, so we've got the two upper and the two lower. But this is one fascial plane, it's the superficial front line. Think of it as a continuous plane here on the front. Now what's important is that you can see the interrelationships between the various areas of the body. This connects uh, musculature in the neck here, the sternocleidomastoid, and the base of the skull to the chest, the sternalis, through the torso here, the abdominal musculature, all the way down to the uh, tops of the feet. So when we're looking at the superficial front line, uh, it's involved in, in a lot of dysfunctions that involve flexion of the body. So if there's a problem here in the neck or in the, in the torso here where there's problems flexing forward, you could have restrictions in the fascial plane there. But when we look at the lower extremity, at the leg, it's involved in knee extension, ankle dorsiflexion, and hip flexion. So in the clinic, like if we see someone coming in with, say, a, a hip flexor problem, we're going to focus in on the superficial front line. If there's a knee problem involving the patella or the attachments onto the tibial tuberosity here, or anything involving dorsiflexion, lifting up of the foot, any restrictions throughout these areas will involve uh, the superficial front line. Sometimes we'll have problems in the lower abdomen here that we can trace directly up to problems with neck flexion. So it's quite an interesting line and what it truly uh, does as well is it, it's this one continuous fascial plane that interconnects structures from above and below, balancing out motion and creating a continuity. Very interesting stuff. So one of the things I want to mention, when we're talking about the superficial front line, we should talk a little bit about an acupuncture meridian. Now, it's really interesting when we look at Chinese medicine because all the acupuncture points are on what we call meridians or lines of energy. Now, in Western medicine, they look at this and they go, well, you know, where's the uh, basis of this? It, it, you know, these are off from neurological structures, so they really don't understand how this could possibly have an effect on a different area. But acupuncture actually teaches us something very important about kinetic chain relationships. We're looking at the superficial front line here. Right next to that, and almost on top of it, is the stomach meridian. Now, I've marked two points on this, two specific acupuncture points. And it's really interesting. There's one just off the side of here, which is the yellow dot here. Just beside this, and also almost falling identical to this, is the stomach meridian. Now, the stomach meridian lies right on top of the fascial plane. A fascial plane is also an area with very high levels of neurological structures and vascular structures. So, if we look at this point here, we have to say, okay, in traditional Chinese medicine, this is stomach 36. Stomach 36 is used for treating conditions in the lower leg, but it's also used for abdominal conditions and conditions of the chest. So we say to ourselves, how could this point possibly have an effect on structures farther up this chain? Well, when they do acupuncture, they put a needle in and they torque the needle. And you can actually measure the amount of torque that is on the needle. Helen Langevin at Harvard University has done some amazing research and they've actually created robots that actually measure the amount of torque on a needle. Now, when they do that and they leave it in there, this creates an effect on the nervous system here which affects everything all the way up the entire body. So that is why they can get incredible results with these points. I've used this point many, many times in clinical practice and seen remarkable results in different areas of the body. A lot of them very distant from the point. 
Another point is actually farther up here in the neck. This is called stomach nine. And an interesting point here, because this point is used quite often for problems with the neck, shoulder, with the head. And what's interesting about this is that we look at problems, people are having headaches, for example. Quite often they'll have shoulder tension, neck tension, which will lead to occipital headaches. You use this point here, stomach nine, to treat all of those. But again, it's not just this area here, it's not a localized point. This is affecting everything else farther down the whole kinetic chain. They will quite often use this point for problems in the abdomen, or even for lower leg problems, or acute problems in the low back. And they'll say, okay, how could this possibly have an effect down there? Again, we have to refer back to the connection between neurological structures. Now, if a person is having a spasm in their back, how could this probably affect something on the front? Well, there's a whole concept here of balancing out the front lines and the posterior line, which we also have another video on. But you soon see that ancient Chinese medicine is teaching us things today about kinetic chain relationships that have to do with the nervous system.